Hello everyone, Anthony Sequera here with the Cisco Learning Network, and I want to go ahead and pick up on our subject of access control list troubleshooting, and I want to talk about something that will drive students a bit crazy, especially when they're just starting out with these access control lists. The students have enough to worry about, especially with an extended access control list, and then what gets added to the mix, of course, is direction. This directionality concept of inbound versus outbound and where to place the particular access control list. Well, in order to practice with this, I went ahead and just quickly got together a three router topology. It's amazing how much we can practice with just three simple routers. So I just strung them together like this. Router one connected to router two, connected to router three. To distinguish them, I put the 10 network in here and I put the 192 network over here. So that really jumps out at you. We've got zero, zero interfaces used everywhere, except for on the right side of the R2 device. So a simple topology to test things. So now if I want to prevent R1 from being able to ping over there to the R3 device, I want to stop that ping. Think about it. I can do this inbound on 00, zero or I can do it outbound on 01. So inbound on 00, zero or outbound on 01. And we can see this left to right traffic flow and therefore inbound on 00, zero or outbound on 0 slash 1. It might be better to do it inbound, right? Because that prevents the router from doing anything with the particular packets at all. So you drop them before they enter the router. Let's try this both ways and let's make sure this works. All right, because certainly if we did it outbound on 00, zero I don't think we're going to meet with much success. So let's see if this inbound on 00, zero and outbound on 0 slash 1 would indeed work. All right, so let's go up to our devices. I'm going to go to my R2 device. That's the device in the middle. And I'm going to say... Okay, IP access list, I'll say 100, we're going to deny the host at 10.10.10.1, 10, 10 that's the R1, from communicating to host 192.168.1.3, that's the R3, and we want to stop the echo. Oh, oh, and by the way, I forgot something here, right? We need to say access list 100 deny ICMP is the particular traffic form that we're going after. And now we can say, all right, we want to stop. Oh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, let's start over. <laughs> Isn't context sensitive help an absolutely wonderful thing when you're working with these extended access control lists. Sure it is. You can see I started to struggle there doing the syntax off the top of my head. All right, no problem. Don't do it off the top of your head. All right, so we go IP access list 100. Oh my. How about this? Access list 100. Yeah, it would help to get started the right way. Okay, deny ICMP, and I want to do host 10.10.10.1. 10 from host 192.168.1.3, and I want to be very specific here. I want to stop echoes that are used in the pings. Pretty cool. Notice here that this access list is going to stop that particular form of ICMP communications, but it would allow all the other forms of ICMP communications. We love extended access control lists for their ability to allow us to be granular in our configurations. Okay, so here we go. I better 
overwrite, if you will, and we learned this in the last video, I better kind of overwrite that explicit, uh, excuse me, the implicit deny all. So I better say, I permit IP any any. Now I've done this so many times, I don't need context sensitive help with that, you notice. So there we go. There we're kind of overriding the implicit deny all with an explicit permit everything. So this should prevent pings from R1 to R3 if we assign it in the appropriate direction. Now, please keep in mind here, folks, that this particular access control list, if we're going to assign it on that incoming interface, like we said, we're going to do it inbound. On the outside interface, it would be outbound. You'll want to double check the access control list syntax to make sure it's going to do exactly what you hope it's going to do. And another great tip is to go ahead and make sure the darn ping would work initially. So we're going to do ping 192.168.13 and make sure your ping is successful. Only, you know, you can only imagine how bad you would mess this up if you create the access list denying the traffic, but the traffic wouldn't have worked to begin with. So now your test is not relevant. And we like to be relevant when we're configuring our networks today. All right, so we're going to go over to R2. And on R2, we are going to apply this. Interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 IP access group 100. This is the inside interface, right? Facing the traffic that's coming in, we're going to do it inbound. So now we go over to the R1 device, we rerun the ping, and sure enough, R2 is saying, sorry, yep, sorry, no way can you reach that particular destination with that particular traffic form. Remember what we did in an earlier video, you can do show access list and you can literally see the traffic matching these particular ACEs. ACEs are a fancy way to say access control entries. And ACEs are also desirable in Texas Hold'em. All right, I just got totally sidetracked there, sorry. Okay, so, great. Inbound, this access list did the trick. Let's see if this access list is going to do the trick on the outbound assignment. Okay, so I'm going to go and recall that from the command history and say, no, we don't want that there. I'm going to go to the other interface, FA0 slash 1, the outbound interface, and I'm going to go ahead and assign it outbound on that interface. There we go. We go back over to R1. We rerun the ping and the same result. The subtle difference here is the traffic made it in through the inside interface, went inside the router, whee, I'm inside the router, woohoo! and then was prevented, the echoes were prevented from going the outside, going out the outside interface. Not as efficient. I kind of like the approach on the inside interface, blocking it inbound, so those packets don't even make it in my router. So, we'll be back with plenty more of these videos where we are going to take a look at access control list troubleshooting, but this was a quick one on this whole concept of inbound versus outbound and how that would work in a sample topology. Thanks so much for joining me everyone and please be checking this thread for more videos very soon.